Okay, so the next topic we want to uh, discuss is sequences. And sequences played an auxiliary role in Calc 1. They weren't the main object of study. The main object of study was functions, for which we discussed limits and continuity and derivatives and integrals and so on. But we did discuss sequences and we, and we saw what kind of role they played. And sequences play a role in Calc 2 as well. And if you remember, in Calc 1 we spent quite a few hours discussing sequences. So this is going to be a very long clip. Okay? Because, so, I don't know, did, did you bring a lunchbox or, and maybe your pillow for a nap? So the truth is, the truth is, sequences play kind of the same role in Calc 2, but this clip is going to be short. And the reason is that there is a specific theorem that basically tells us how to collapse the theory of sequences in R2 or R3 to sequences in R. So we don't really have to go over everything and generalize everything. There's going to be a bit, and then there's going to be this theorem, and then we're going to know everything, and we're not going to have to discuss sequences at length and generalize everything. So first of all, let me remind you what we defined in R. Of course, the, the important notion was the notion of convergence of a sequence. So uh, in Calc 1, um, or in R, um, when we have a sequence Xn converging to L, Tell me if what I write is, is not familiar notation-wise or whatever. So a sequence of points in R converges to a limit as n goes to infinity in R if for every epsilon greater than 0, there is, there exists uh, some number n such that Whenever the index exceeds n, this is one of my favorite things in mathematics, big, small n bigger than big n, such that if n is greater than n, that implies that xn and l, the distance between them, is less than epsilon. Does everybody remember this definition of convergence and feel rather comfortable with it and, and know what it means? Okay. So now what we want to do is, so this was a sequence of points in R, okay, points on the real line. Now what we want to do is take a sequence of points in three-dimensional space. Want to see one? Here it is. Tuck, 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 tuck. See this sequence up here? Does everybody see it? Okay. And what do I mean when a sequence converges? Let's say this is L. I'm not hallucinating, okay, but you're all seeing what I'm seeing, right? So, so there's a point L here. What do I mean that the sequence converges to L? That somehow it behaves in a way that eventually it gets close to L. Do you see that? Okay, so a sequence of points in space eventually gets close to L. Okay? It just has more liberty now than not just converging on a straight line, but rather... Okay, can you do that? Okay, sorry. Um, so here's a definition. Here's the definition. So how am I going to write a sequence? So a sequence is now going to be a sequence of vectors, x and, well, that's, where did that go? Here it is. I'm going to put the n up here, because down here are the, are the, the x1, x2, x3, the components of the vector itself. So xn is now going to be a sequence, um, let's add the word let. Let xn be a sequence in R3. Sequence of points. So each of these, each of these, so for example x, uh, 5, that's the fifth element of that sequence, x5 is itself x1, 5, 
x2, 5, x3, 5. It's itself, it itself has three components, so that's why I wrote the 5 up here. That's the, it's indexed as an element of the sequence, and then it has three components, okay? If you prefer, if you prefer, you can write it as x5, y5, z5. That's just as appropriate, okay? Good, do you understand what I mean? Okay, so each element of the sequence is itself a vector now. Okay, good. Okay. I'm going to erase this. It's stuck in the middle of the definition. Let Xn be a sequence in R3. We say that Xn converges as n goes to infinity to some limit L. Now, what is this L now? It's again an element in R3. It's a point in space. L itself has three components now. Do you agree? Okay. How am I going to say that? Think of the one-dimensional definition. Bless you. Think of the one-dimensional definition. How am I going to say this? How am I going to say that these points get closer and closer to this limit point in three dimensions. Ball is good, very good. Okay, so we say that if for every epsilon, okay, there, there are a couple ways of saying it maybe, but it always is gonna start with for every epsilon, there exists A number n such that if we exceed, if the index exceeds n, okay, if we went far enough in the sequence, we want to say that now we're epsilon close to this point L. We can say that in various ways. Ball is good. We can say that xn is in a ball of radius epsilon centered at L. Do you agree that that's a good way of saying it? Another way of saying it is maybe that the distance, remember we had that little d, the distance, the distance from xn to l is less than epsilon. Do you agree? So both ways are fine. Maybe I'll use the distance one because it more resembles that uh, original definition in R, such that this implies that the distance between xn and l is less than epsilon. Do you see that this is a generalization of the definition in R? If, for example, uh, we weren't working in R3, but in R, then this would be just a set of numbers, and the only difference would be here. But we said that already. What's the distance between a number and a number? It's the absolute value of their difference, right? That's how we met. And that's precisely the definition in R. Do you see that? So do you see that this generalizes the definition in R? Everybody? Okay. Good. So maybe now let's add that remark um, that we wrote earlier, just so that everybody is clear on this. It's a bit confusing, but not that bad. So xn, xn, every element of the sequence is itself now a vector. Maybe let's write it um, like we did before. x1n, x2n, and x3n. And L itself now has three components. So it's L1, L2, L3. Okay, all of these are points in Rn now. Good? Okay. And here's the theorem. Bless you, twice. So the theorem says the following. A sequence in R3 converges to a limit in R3 if and only if 
if and only if, you know this symbol, right? This notation. If and only if each of the components converges as a sequence in R. Okay? So if and only if X and I converges to L I for every I equals, or maybe not for every, I mean for every I, but I can only have three values here, I equals one, two, and three. So X and I, X and one is the first component, X and two is the second component, X and three is the third component. So a sequence of points converges if and only if it converges component-wise. Okay, so the theory of converging sequences in R3 reduces to the theory of convergence in R. Okay, so if you have a set of points in space, here they are, where am I? Here they are, and you know that they converge to this point here, you have to look at their x-coordinates. Their x-coordinates, the first coordinates of the points, is a sequence in R, right? The, f the x of the first point, the x of the second point, the x of the third point, the x of the fourth point, and the x of the limit. And check if that sequence converges. Then you look at the y components, the y of the first point, the y of the second point, the y of the third point, and so on, and the y of the limit. That should be a converging sequence, and likewise for z. Clear? Okay. So, every theorem you may have had would apply if you want to check if a sequence converges, you have to check the components. And for checking the components, you can use all the machinery that you developed in Calc 1. Okay, you can use the sandwich theorem, you can use, uh, uh, you know, a uh, uh, bounded sequence times a sequence that tends to zero, the product tends to zero, right? You, you know all these theorems. You can use uh, um, arithmetic of limits. Every, everything you know um, just follows. Good? Okay. Um, so let's write that. So uh, as a consequence, <coughs> is this how you write consequence? <coughs> hey, I didn't mean for that to happen, but it's huh, a good word to use in the chapter on sequences. As a consequence, um, the theory of sequences in R3 or R2 or R2 um, is uh, straightforward or follows follows easily from uh, R. Do you understand what I mean? Okay, so you don't have to do anything magical to check if a sequence of points in three space converges. You just take the components, see if it converges components wise, and that's it. Okay. So as an example, maybe d d d did you learn the bolzano weierstrass theorem? Okay. So example, example. Um, bolzano weierstrass Bol Sano Weierstrass Do you, Does anybody remember what the theorem said? Right, it said in R every converging sequence No, that would be too easy Every bounded sequence has a converging subsequence Remember that? Okay so let's state it in R3. Ready? Every bounded sequence has a converging subsequence. I just stated it in R3. It's the same theorem. 
How would I prove it? I don't know if you proved Bolzano of Arstras, but the proof of Bolzano of Arstras in R is not elementary. It's rather, rather cool. Do you remember how to, how to prove it? There was this kind of argument using Cantor's lemma and, and it, it, it... Do you know what I'm talking about? Take the interval and break it in half and it, it's kind of a, It's kind of ho not immediate, right? How would I prove this? How would I prove that every bounded sequence in R3 has a converging subsequence? Well, first I, want to, I, I have to know what a bounded sequence in R3 is. A bounded sequence, a sequence is a set of points, right? When is a set bounded? That was a definition when we talked about topology. When is a set called bounded? When it's contained in some ball. Okay, so if the sequence is contained in some ball, then it's a bounded sequence. Do you agree? Okay, so take a bounded sequence. You don't know anything about it, just a bunch of points as long as they're contained in some giant ball. And somewhere in there should be hindi, hiding a converging subsequence, somewhere. Okay? How do I prove that? How do I? Do I need to start breaking the ball in halves or I don't know what? Answer, no. Because I can use bolzano Weierstrass. Is there an E here? I'm not sure about this E. This is German. This is not English even. What would a, na what would a road in Germany named after him be called? Like Weierstrasse. Sorry. So how would I prove this? I can use Bolzano Weierstrasse in R. So if I have a bounded sequence, then each of its components is a bounded sequence in R. Do you agree? And therefore, each of its components has a converging subsequence in R. Right? And then from that, I can build, build back a converging subsequence of the original sequence in R3. Okay? It's not completely straightforward. You have to do it carefully. You have to do it uh, component by component. So you have to start with the first component, the X component, it's a bounded sequence in R, take a converging subsequence. Okay? Then take the Y's corresponding to that and take a converging subsequence of those and then do that for the Z's. Okay? So I'm going to leave this as a homework to try and formalize the proof of this, but it's really a three-line proof based on the analogous theorem in R. Okay? And the same goes for all the theory. That's what I wrote here. You want a, even a very deep theorem, it would follow from the corresponding theorems for sequences in R. Okay? So this is going to be, this thing is going to be homework, proof. Okay? I basically said everything you have to do. You just have to do it carefully. Okay. So that's all I'm going to say about sequences. It's not much, but it's all we need. Okay? We're going to use sequences, and, and you're going to see in examples as we use them that really we're not doing anything new. No new machinery as far as sequences go. Goes as far as sequences go. That's not the same for functions. Okay? So next, coming up next, finally, functions. And for them, we're going to see that, that we're going to have to open our minds and, and start thinking a bit differently than, than good old Calc 1.